Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. Thanks for joining me today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about gems. Now, gems are one of the rarest resources in Raid Shadow Legends, and they're also incredibly powerful. Now, I'm going to be approaching this subject from a free to play perspective. But even if you are a spender, you always want to get the most value for your gems. So we're going to talk about where you shouldn't spend your gems, where you can spend your gems in an emergency and where you really want to focus spending your gems for the most value. Let's get started. OK, so there are a lot of places in the game where you can spend your gems, but the vast majority of them are like throwing your gems away. There's very little value return for a relatively rare resource, especially places like, let's say, the market refresh. You can refresh this page for five gems. It is basically like throwing five gems away. There's very little that you need here in the market anyway. So typically you can just wait, wait for the refresh. Come check the market. You're probably not going to buy much. Maybe you pick up some mystery shards. Now, there is a second refresh here in the arena that is also worth five gems. And this one is actually a little bit more worthwhile. I wouldn't do this very often, but if you are getting close to the end of a mission where you need to get a certain amount of arena points or you need to get a certain arena rank, then you might want to refresh um, if there's a timer or if you're just trying to you know, push a goal before you go to bed or something like that. Additionally, if the arena is about to reset its week and offer rewards and you're really close to getting an additional tier, say going from silver four up into gold or from gold four into gold five or from gold into platinum. Obviously, that would be the biggest one. Um, you can increase your rewards and therefore uh, a few extra refreshes may give you an opportunity to get a better reward at the week's end. So although I wouldn't prioritize putting gems into this regularly, there are moments where this is a decent place to spend some gems. Now, similarly to the refreshes, you can also buy keys for certain fights. You can buy uh, Demon Lord Clan Boss keys. You can buy additional keys for the Iron Twins. Um, you can buy keys for Live Arena. Uh, so all of those places are similar to Arena in the sense that you probably don't want to spend gems there often. Um, you can also buy Arena refills, by the way. I would say that if you have a lot of time in the game and you have an opportunity for like additional Arena wins and that can help you build your Great Hall faster, that would be an OK place to spend gems. But I generally recommend you don't do that unless you know that you're going to have a high win percentage and you just have the time to kill and you don't necessarily have energy or something else you could be doing. So in that case, you might want to say, OK, I'm going to put, you know, an extra refill into arena every day or maybe a couple of refills, um, especially because maybe in the rest of the week, I'm too busy to play. So maybe I just play on the weekend and I need to keep pace with the the progress of my great hall. That would be a place you could spend gems again, not super high value but an understandable place to spend some gems for some players. OK, so now with more of the less important uh, gem spending opportunities out of the way, let's talk about the places where you can really get value for your gems. In the early game, there's a tip that I've mentioned, a lot of content creators mentioned, um, where you can spend gems very, very early and get a lot of value. And that is on masteries for your first champion. So here is my starter champion on this account. It's Athel. You can see I have her masteries completely maxed out to tier six. She is my only six star currently. And I bought her masteries. It takes 800 gems. And the way that you do it basically is you just go into the masteries. You click on any open mastery and it says get all scrolls here. And you can just click get all scrolls and you can see it's 800 gems. You do not get a discount for having some of the masteries already farmed up. So it's going to be 800 gems, whether you need every single scroll or just the last five. So obviously, if you're going to buy the scrolls for you know one particular champion, don't farm up that champion's masteries too far. It's OK to farm tier one, two, maybe tier three. But after that point, you want to stop if you know that you're going to buy that champion's masteries. Now, the big question is how many champions are valuable to get masteries on in this way? I would say for everyone, the starter champion is extremely valuable or your four, first six star. If you go with a different six star first, um, get the masteries right away, because the power that you're going to get here, especially from this tier six mastery, uh, which in this case is Giant Slayer, 
um, that's going to be extremely valuable in the clan boss fight. So you do want that tier six mastery on your clan boss champion. Also, obviously, this is my campaign farmer. She's my lead in dungeons, uh, not necessarily my lead, but she's my carry in dungeons and all over the place. So I want her fully mastered. The amount of power you get from a full set of masteries is considerable. Um, so definitely on your first champion, you should buy your mastery. So save your first 800 gems. Don't spend them anywhere else. And then buy your starter champions masteries. After that, it's a matter of choice. I would say it is reasonable to go ahead and buy a second champion's masteries. So for instance, if you knew who your second six star was going to be, I would say go ahead and do that. So if I knew Deacon Armstrong was going to be my next six star, I would go ahead and buy his masteries. Do not waste a purchase on a champion that you think you're going to leave at level 40 or 50 for a considerable amount of time, meaning like a month or six weeks. Um, you only want to do this on champions you are 100% sure are going to either be your next six star or, or are currently already at level 60. And that is because the power comes from this sixth tier of the masteries. Um, that is, you know, the capstone mastery, which is the most powerful. After your second champion, I would not buy masteries for any more champions for at least the first year of your account, especially if you are a free to play player. I have run several free to play accounts and I have bought the mastery on my first champion. I have bought the mastery on my first and second champion, and I have bought no masteries for any champions. Those are the three combos I've used. They are all viable. They are all pretty solid. I think the best one in my experience is just buying it on my first champion unless and this is an important unless unless you happen to pull a, a champion like early in the game in the first two weeks, say you pull another legendary or another epic who you know is going to be a hard carry, especially in dungeons and clan boss. And then maybe to get them up to speed, you could go ahead and six star them. And one of the nice things about doing that is if you happen to have an XP barrel, you can use that in conjunction with buying masteries. So this XP barrel instantly increases a champion's level to the highest possible level for their rank. What that means is if they are six stars and level one, you can drop a barrel on them and it takes them all the way to 60. So as soon as you are ready to six star your second champion, if you have a barrel, you can drop the barrel buy all the masteries and have that champion completely done other than books, have that champion completely, you know, maxed out and ready to go instantly. So XP barrels and buying masteries go hand in hand. And so if you do have a champion that you know you're going to want to do that to, then I would consider that. If you don't have an XP barrel um, or you don't have a champion that you're 100% sure is going to be your next six star, I would just stick to buying the masteries for one champion. Now, why do we recommend that? You know, you'll hear that from a lot of uh, content creators, but the, the question is why? And there are separate videos on that, but basically it comes down to the value that comes out of Minotaur's Labyrinth. So if we go and take a look at the Labyrinth, what you'll find is if you can farm stage 15, it actually starts probably around stage 12 or 13, but if you can st farm stage 15, then it is cheaper to get your scrolls here than it is to buy them with gems. So if you were to use gems to buy energy and then use all of the energy here in the Minotaur's Labyrinth, it would take roughly 670, 680 gems per champion to max out their masteries. So you're saving over 100 gems just on the energy um, trade, you know, trading the gems for energy and the energy for masteries rather than buying the masteries. Now, obviously, this takes time. It takes time to run this. You have to run roughly 155 runs in the Minotaur's Labyrinth. And if each one is taking a minute and a half or two minutes, then you're talking about, you know, six hours or so uh, worth of time in here but it still saves you considerable gems and generally we have more time in our day to play this game kind of on auto battle in the background than we have ways to get gems in addition if you are leveling up your champions at the same time meaning the champion that you're getting masteries on getting the scrolls on is not completely maxed out in terms of level you're also getting xp and regardless of whether you're getting xp or not you're also getting silver so let's say you were to take your 800 gems and instead of buying masteries, you were to spend them here in the Minotaur's Labyrinth. 
if you have the sort of least efficient scenario, which would be four fully maxed out champions and then one target champion that you're trying to get the masteries on, right? In that scenario, if you spend 800 gems, in addition to getting the scrolls for that champion, you'd actually get an, an additional 20% of the scrolls for another champion after that champion is finished. In addition to that, you're getting over 650,000 experience and you're getting over 1.15 million silver. So that's a significant improvement in terms of spending your 800 gems in the Minotaur's Labyrinth versus just buying the Masteries. If you were to use the most efficient method, which is to have one max Minotaur farmer in stage 15, and you were to have four unmaxed, unmasteried champions that were farming XP and scrolls and silver here in the Minotaur's Labyrinth, you're actually going to be picking up over 2.5 million additional XP and that 1.15 million silver. So don't buy your masteries if you can help it. As long as you can farm stage 15, it's a good goal to try to get a solo farmer of the Minotaur's Labyrinth. Get in here, get a lot more value for your gems than you get from buying masteries. Now, two additional early game places where you can spend gems that are extremely valuable are the gem mine and the guardian ring. So in the gem mine, you are just investing in basically a, a return of gems. It is a permanent production mine. So every day you can get up to 15 gems. There are three stages or three levels of the gem mine. The first one costs 500 gems and produces five gems a day. The second one costs 500 and produces five gems a day. And the third one costs 500 and produces five gems a day. So for 1500 gems, you can get 15 gems a day, which means 100 days after you've invested, you have gotten your investment back. And from that point forward, you're getting 15 gems a day for doing nothing but logging in once a day and clicking on the gem mine. Now, that's great value. It may feel like a large initial investment, but early in the game, you get more gems than you're going to get for the next six months or so. Once you get into the late game, there are more sources of gems that you could get. There are better sources of gems that you can get. But early on, they kind of throw a bunch of gems at you, and then that trickles down and kind of goes away. So by investing 1,500 of those gems early into the gem mine, you're going to have that constant supply. And by the time you are four or five months into the game, you're going to be very happy about your gem mine. So I would actually prioritize this immediately after buying the masteries on your first champion. I think this is the next most valuable place to spend those early gems. The next place to spend gems is here in the guardian ring and you can unlock the sparring pit. Each slot has three levels, level one, two, and three. Uh, the first level costs 300 gems, and as you can see, it returns 2100 XP per hour. Each additional level in each slot costs more gems and returns less XP per hour. The first slot level, just getting to level one, uh, spending the 300 gems and un unlocking all five of these, this is an extremely efficient way to add value to your account. So this, like the gem mine, would cost you 1,500 gems to unlock all five of these spots. Now, you've maybe heard some other people's analysis of this particular uh, option here of unlocking the sparring pit. Some people think it's a good idea. Some people think it's a bad idea. Some people think it's a great idea. In terms of value, if you're looking this, at this just as an XP generator, if you unlock the first level of all five slots, you will be generating roughly 250,000, that's right, 250,000 XP per day at 100% efficiency. Now, nobody runs this at 100% efficiency, um, so that's something to consider. You know, at best, maybe you're at 75% efficiency or 65% efficiency, but still, that's very good value for this uh, investment of gems. And in fact, if you were to just take the XP you could get from, say, 12-3 Brutal Campaign and you were to forget about the silver and the other drops that happen in there, um, you would actually be getting about 100k more XP per day for the gem investment versus the gem mine. So the gem mine is going to get you about 150,000 experience per day in terms of gem production. Uh, if you were to use that as energy in 12.3 Brutal Campaign. And this will get you about 250,000 XP per day. 
Now, that may feel like a major difference. That maybe feels like a big gap, and it feels like this is more valuable than the gem mine. But remember, that's at 100% efficiency, and it's also discounting all of the silver, all of the rare champions and uncommon champions and mystery shards uh, that you get from campaign. So I believe that the gem mine is more valuable, not only because the equivalent expended like expenditure of gems in the campaign will return more value in the long run, but also because it's more flexible. You can use those gems for anything. You can use them for arena refills or a clan boss key if you need one in an emergency. Whereas here, this is only ever going to give you XP. So while it is valuable and it is efficient and it's going to allow you to get uh, more six stars than you would ever get without this sparring pit open. I still think the first 1500 gems after your first champion's masteries should go into the gem mine, and then the next 1500 should probably go here. Okay, now I want to talk about one last place where you can spend your gems where I think it's incredibly valuable for a free to play player, and that surprisingly is the shop. There are two items in the shop, in the gem shop, that I think you may want to consider spending your gems on. And the first is XP banners. So the XP boost here uh, for the three day XP boost is 280 gems. Now, in most cases, if you are playing regularly, you're going to have an XP boost up probably 80 or 90% of the time. But to cover that difference, you might want to come in here and occasionally buy an XP boost. Um, it's not cheap. I don't think that these prices are fantastic, but they're good enough and the value is strong enough that if you are an active player and you're playing a lot, you wanna have that XP boost up 100% of the time, especially as a free to play, right? Because if you don't have an XP boost up, it's going to take longer to farm up your champions, your food champions. It's gonna take longer to get your next six star. Um, it's going to take longer to level up your account. So all of those advantages come from having an XP boost up. So if you drop an XP boost, if it drops off of your account and you have to come in here and buy one on occasion, I would say, you know, once a month, that would probably be fine. Um, if you're buying, you know, these two, three, four days a month, you're going to run out of gems really quickly. And I try not to do that. I try to uh, find all of the other sources of XP boosts that I can and use those instead. And the last and most important place a free to play player can spend their gems is on the big shard pack. Stay away from the small shard pack, buy the big shard pack, it's a much better pack. Here you are going to get 11 ancient shards and the silver to pull those ancient shards for 900 gems. Now I will admit that this is probably the most controversial piece of advice in this video. Pretty much all the other content creators are going to agree with everything I've said in all the other places. But this is the one place where I've consistently seen content creators say, this is too much. This is not good value for your gems. And I think that that assessment is based on two things. One is it's based on the price point for gems versus the price point for shards when you're calculating in real money. So if you are buying packs, you can get ancient shards at a better rate than this gem conversion. The second thing I think that is going on is that spenders consider shards differently than free to play players. The value of an individual shard is lower because the vast majority of packs that spenders buy include some shards, even if they also include, say, skill tomes or, you know, energy or whatever. So shards are more precious and more valuable to free to play players. Now, the thing I want you to think about when you are considering buying a big shard pack is how can you get the most value out of this investment? Okay, so I've come over here to my main account just to show you the way I deal with gems and these big shard packs. Now, yesterday there was a champion chase tournament. It just finished. It was during a two times sacred shard event. Now, I pulled a number of sacred shards and I was doing well in the tournament, but I was not at the top. So it's a little bit hard to see here, but what you can see is I've actually finished as the number one uh, finisher, as the number one competitor in my tournament group. And in that, I won a legendary tome. I won six pieces of six star mythical relentless gear, and I got 10 
fragments for a current fusion. I also got all of the rewards in the column on the right side. Now, I was pulling sacred shards for the two times event, and that got me close to about 4,000 points. But as you can see, I needed more points in order to close the gap, get over the 6,200 that the leader had, and get that extra legendary tome. Now, legendary tomes are incredibly valuable. That six star relentless mythical gear is also very valuable. And those 10 shards allow me to save maybe 20 million silver and another 5,000 energy in terms of other events. So if we were to translate the gems that I spent on the ancient shards, I spent about 6,000 gems on ancient shard packs. And those ancient shard packs got me a legendary tome, the six star relentless mythical gear, and 10 additional fragments. Plus, it got me the additional legendary tome up here in the reward column. But so if I were to say to you, for about 6,000 gems worth of ancient shards, you could get two legendary tomes. Um, you know, you could save, let's say, 20 million silver and 5,000 energy, and you would get a full set of six star relentless gear at the mythical rarity. Would you think that's worth 6,000 gems? Don't forget, in addition to that, I got all of the rare champions. I also pulled an extra legendary. I also pulled about five epic champions. None of those were particularly moving. They weren't like great champions. The legendary is a very bad legendary. The epics were all duplicates that I had. But if you're talking about 80 additional chickens, three star, four star chickens and a vault guardian legendary, in addition to all of those other resources for 6,000 gems, that seems like a really good return on investment to me. You could also use this method during a two times ancient shard event. So if you have a champion chase going on there or you just want to pull more shards to try to get like through your mercy or something, you can also use it during a guaranteed legendary event for ancient shards. So you can get a lot of extra value out of buying these big shard packs. So in preparation for this video, I did a little calculation on the big shard pack just based on my account. And what I found is that over the course of the past year, I've been spending a lot of, I, I do this on all my accounts, but I've been spending uh, the majority of my gems, about 75% or 80% of my gems on big shard packs. And that has resulted in four additional legendaries and about 40 additional epics, plus several hundred rares. So all of those chickens, all of those food, all of those books, um, plus those legendaries, come from me saving my gems and using them here. Now the other place you could spend them, the last place you could spend them, the place we compare everything to is spending gems on energy. Now your maximum energy matters here. So you're obviously gonna get more value if you are at the maximum of 130 energy. I think that happens around level 60 or 65, something like that. So once you get to 130, you get 40 gems turn into a refillable potion basically, and you can go ahead and get 130 energy. So that is the baseline comparison for everything. So you could, I could have spent that 6,000 energy, or I'm sorry, those 6,000 gems on energy refills, and that would have gotten me a lot of refills. We're talking about thousands of energy here. So the question is, is that energy worth it in terms of silver, experience, and all that stuff versus all of the rewards that I just got? Now, as a free-to-play player, the single rarest resource in the entire game for me is Legendary Tomes. So I actually picked up three legendary tomes uh, with those gems that I spent. And so that's definitely worth it for me. That is about a quarter to a third of a legendary champion's books. And now I'm at the point where I can probably book out three new legendaries. Uh, and that's extremely valuable because I have more good legendaries than I can possibly book. So at this point in the game, spending those Ancient shards during two times event is less important than getting other value in other places, especially legendary tomes for me. But early in the game, if you are an early game player, you might simply want more strong epics and more rare, uh, more legendaries than you are getting. And so buying those packs and pulling those shards during a two times ancient shard event is probably the best thing you can do during the first year. 
And then you can start transitioning to the method that I'm using now. Okay, that is it. That is the, the basically all, those are all the places that I think it is valuable to spend gems on. I don't know if I've missed any. I don't think I've missed any major ones, but if I have, please let me know in the comments below. Um, it's always a little embarrassing when I miss something like that, but I like it to be in the comments so other players can see it. So if I do miss something, they can read the comments. I'll usually pin something like that at the top and they can then have that reference point as well as the information from the video. Quick reminder, this is Clan Boss Week. We'll be getting back to the Clan Boss of videos starting tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video. I've been Cole Red. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you in another video very soon.